examination of the nervous system consists of four components. The examination of the higher cerebral functions, examination of cranial nerves, examination of the upper limbs and examination of the lower limbs. In this segment, we will introduce to you the techniques of examination of the cranial nerves. The examination of the olfactory nerve is not routinely done during the neurological examination. However, if the patient has anosmia or if the patient has signs to suggest uh, abnormality of the olfactory nerve, it is then tested. I will now demonstrate the method of testing the olfactory nerve. Sarangi, can you close your eyes please? And can you occlude one nostril? Can you feel odor? Yes. Can you identify it? It is peppermint. Good. Can you close your eyes again? Occlude the other nostril. Can you feel this odor? Yes. Can you identify the odor? No, I can't. Right. So, it is not important to identify the odor, but the patient should be able to identify a difference between the two odors. When testing for smell, do not use irritants such as ammonia, since it can stimulate the trigeminal nerve. Examination of the optic nerve consists of four components. Examination of the visual acuity, examination of visual fields, examination of color vision and examination of the optic fundi. In examination of the visual acuity, it is done by asking the patient to read the smallest line on a Snellens chart while standing 6 meters away. At the bedside, a pocket Snellen charts may be used. In doing so, it has to be held 2 meters away from the patient and the patient is asked to read the smallest line possible. If the patient has difficulty of vision, one needs to exclude refractory error by asking the patient to read through a pinhole. This is the pocket Snellen chart. The Jagger's chart is a chart that is used to examine the patient's near vision and this is held 30 centimeters away and the patient is asked to read the smallest print possible. Would you like to read this? If children live with criticism, they learn to condemn. If children live with hostility, they learn to fight. That is good. Thank you. Examination of color vision is not routinely done in the neurological examination. When indicated, it should be done using the Ishihara charts. Visual field testing is most accurately done by perimetry. At the watch side, it is done by the confrontation technique. In the confrontation technique, one uses a white hat pin to map out the visual fields. The examiner must sit opposite the patient. It is important to be at the patient's eye level. Sarangi, can you close your right eye please? And the examiner must always maintain a constant distance. You can see this white hat pin. Yes. Right. Now close your right eye. With your left eye, look at my right eye. Do not look elsewhere. When you see the white ball, let me just tell me that you can see it. Can see. Can see. Look at my eye. Can see. Can see. Right. Now we will examine the other eye. Sarangi, close your left eye, please. Right. 
with your right eye keep looking at my eye and no else. Tell me when you can see the white hat pin when it comes into your visual fields. Do you see it now? Can see. Can see. Keep looking at my eye. Can see. Can see. Good. Thank you. The white hat pin is brought in from four directions. For examination of central field defects or what we call scotomas, we use the red hat pin and in doing so it is the same technique. Sarangi, can you close your right eye please? Maintaining same distance and one will try to map out the red with the red hat pin any visual field defects in the central field. Examination of the optic fundi is done using the ophthalmoscope. The ophthalmoscope is held in the hand so that the index finger is able to adjust the dial. In examining the right eye, the examiner stands to the right of the patient and it is important to clearly instruct the patient. Sarangi, I am now going to examine your eye. I will flash a little light into your eye and I want you to focus at that distal object. Do not move your eyes, keep looking at that object, do not look at this light. You may blink your eyes if you want to. When examining the patient's right eye, it is important to use the examiner's right eye and hold the ophthalmoscope in the right hand while standing to the right of the patient. In examining the left eye, the examiner must stand on the left side of the patient, hold the ophthalmoscope in his left hand and examine using his left eye. Sarangi, look at that object. and sixth nerves are examined together. The first step is to inspect the patient's eyes for the presence of ptosis, proptosis and squint. One must note the size, shape and symmetry of the pupils. Examination of the ocular movements. The patient's head must be steadied. Sarangi, I want you to follow this object without turning your head. Move your eyes to look at the object and tell me if you see double. Do you see double? No. Now? No. Now? No. It is important to move the object at a level above the patient's eye level so that the pupils and eyes can be clearly observed with the eyes widely open. Although nystagmus is a due to dysfunction of the vestibular component of the eighth cranial nerve, it is tested during testing eye movements. In doing so, it is important to realize that nystagmus beyond 30 degrees at the extremes could be normal. 
therefore, nystagmus is noted at a point just at 30 degrees of the straight vision. And it is also important to note that nystagmus, there is a fast phase and a slow phase and conventionally it is the fast phase that is given as the direction of the nystagmus. 